to all you computer warriors, trolls, haters. I read your messages on those videos I put up with me and my crutches. Me getting my knees straight. You were happy I was injured. You're also happy because you thought I'd never run again. All that C I told you, tagging your friends. You don't know me. You see a one minute video about me. You know how hard I train, how I live, the dedication I put into my life. So why do you troll? Maybe it's a fat, lazy, with no discipline or dedication. Maybe you're jealous. Who knows? But guarantee this, I'll be back better than ever. Ha <laughs> ha, stay hard. I just got a 17 hour flight. And I'm sitting there thinking, take a day off. No one will know. But I keep on thinking too, there's always someone out there working harder than you. I'm haunted by that, knowing that that someone out there is willing to forgo personal desires and comforts, forgo sleep, forgo whatever it takes to be better, to be the best. In life, a lot of times, a lot of us have that person out there. There may not be a name or a face to him, but he exists. You make sure in life to think about that person. You make sure they put a name and face to it. You, you make sure the name and face is yours. You do the haunting. Get in somebody's head. Own space. In all times when you want to quit, because we're all human, you make sure you remember one thing. All those times, hours, and days, you sacrifice to be the best. Stay hard. Because every day is a battle. Every day is a battle because your mind wants to choose the path of least resistance. Every day. But you don't become better by, by ever doing that. You become normal. And I don't want to be normal. So it may not be a life for everybody, but I find a lot of peace in not being normal in my life. To be at the point of your life where you don't care about being judged, you can be in a room of a million people and they all hate you, and you walk in and you go like this. Not because you're angry at them, because you know yourself inside and out, and you know that you've put yourself to hell to be where you're at today. You've walked the walk, you've talked the talk, and you've walked the walk. And that's, to me, what it's all about. It's all about putting those boots on the ground and getting after it every day. And once you do that, you have a feeling about yourself that no one can ever take away or even understand. But what makes it so crazy to me is so many people have that ability. They haven't taken the time to see what they want in life. Therefore, he's crazy. I'm crazy. They put a title on us. And you know what a title does to people? A title is the greatest separator of all time. It allows you to go away in your comfort zone saying, he's just nuts. He's special, special person. That gives you a get out of jail free card. You can go ahead and be normal now because we're special people. No, we found what we want in life. That's all it is. So it is, and very few people, they're all confused. Life's confusing, because they make it confusing. You got big goals this year, but in true guidance fashion, there'll always be setbacks. So people think I killed that 300 pound man of mine. Oh no, he lurks. Whenever I'm in a setback, or defeated, he pops up in my mind. Every morning I wake up and get a nice green smoothie get after it. This morning, I smelled the kitchen making an eggs cooking. That big boy of mine, he's always waiting with a knife and fork in one hand. Wait, come back to the dark side. Oh no, not today. I know how you look. I know how you sound. There will always be complications and setbacks before the finish line. We must be ready for him. Ha <laughs> ha, stay hard. I was about 24 years old, and I went from 175 to almost 300 pounds. And um, that's when I sat down on my couch and realized <laughs> we gotta go back. And it started with me going back to my father. So we left when I was eight years old. We went to a small town in Brazil, Indiana. So when you come from a messed up foundation like I did in Buffalo, New York, where my dad beat me senseless, and now I have that messed up foundation, and now I'm here being the only black person, I call it the only in my book, 
being the only black person. My mom's working three jobs. We're living in a seven dollar a month place. She's never at home. So it's not like I had some mentors coming in to help me. You know, they're trying to put me in these different group places for like having some shrink talk to me and these eight, nine kids and one kid setting his house on fire, another kid's peeing in the trash can. And I'm looking at this at eight years old. These are the things I had to go back and relive. You know, I'm 24 years old now. And I have to go back to all these things that no one knew about me in this group place where I'm in this place where these people are crazy and they think I'm crazy. And I'm looking at them thinking, I'm not crazy. You just don't know where I come from. I came from a place that truly damaged my mind, damaged my soul, and now I have to go back on my own to face this. So at 24 years old, I sat there a lot of times, it was like one day, I woke up and said, I gotta face this. This haunting voice in my head kept on saying, man, we gotta go back. The only way we can go forward is to go all the way back. And that's very scary to do for everybody. The only way you're gonna fix yourself is to go all the way back to the beginning, to your childhood, because that's where everything starts. You have to do that every day, man. You become complacent. You become very civilized in life. You know, the worst thing that can happen to a person is you become civilized. When I mean, you get to that point where you believe that you've arrived, when you, my God, man, I'm up there near Michelle Obama on my book. I've done it, man. I'm good. I don't have to be a wildland firefighter, man. I retired. I ain't got to go out there and dig fire line for three miles. I'm 43, man. I've done it. And that's exactly when it's over. That mindset right there to me is death. I'm not saying you can go as hard as you did when you were 20 or now at 43, but there's a new bar that you must always set in your life. And once you become complacent and you become civilized, you've arrived, you're no good for anybody. I go back to the sewer, and the sewer is that $7 a month place I once lived in as a young kid. Mentally, mentally. And I always talk about I'm always paying rent in that $7 a month place where I grew up, in that nasty little place I grew up in. I remember it. I remember like it was yesterday, and I'm glad I do. I never want to forget the dungeon of where I come from. Even though it's real spooky and it's scary and there's no lights on in there and there's cobwebs and some demons, all those in there made me Goggins, made me who I am today. That's where the strength came from. You gotta go back to the beginning, to, to the fundamentals of life. People may think that I'm this extrovert guy now because I've been trying to get this book out there, but out of everybody with, you know, like, like with their books, I think that I probably took on the least amount of podcasts. I think we turned down over 200 podcasts. Uh, I was getting them left and right. And I'm like, you know what, man, if you buy the book, you buy it. You know, I'm not gonna be out here trying to pump this book on people and people oversell themselves too much, I think, in life. And that's just not me, man. If you like it and you hear about me through word of mouth, Merry Christmas. If not, man, so be it, man. You still don't, you don't hear about me.